you, you know, you're making a big investment. You've got to inspect what's happening mm-hmm. and, and understand, okay, if, if leads aren't converting to consults, what's, let's, let's triage the issue, right? What, what is it? Is, are we not getting good leads? Do we have the wrong person managing the leads? Are they using the wrong information? Is it a scheduling problem? Is, um, is it a staffing problem? Where's the breakdown? Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, and what are the questions that we may be getting over and over from clients that tell us, gosh, we should probably add that to information, right? If, if every patient is asking you, every lead is asking the same question other than how much does it cost and when can I come in? Because they should be asking those questions, but if they're all asking the same clinical question, maybe we need to shift on marketing a little bit, or if they're, um, if the feedback that the clinicians are getting that are doing the treatments is the same, like, you know, gosh, I'm always behind. Well, maybe you need a 45 minute block instead of a 30 minute block, or maybe that first 15 minutes needs to be with a cosmetic coordinator who's handling things. Are clinicians doing things that that are revenue generating, which, you know, we see that happen all the time in practices. You know, you're your nurse injector, the clinician who might be doing vaginal rejuvenation, whomever might be doing what treatment, they're a revenue profit center for that practice. And if they're doing things that aren't profit center driven, th- that needs to be allocated to somebody else who isn't a profit center, right? So mm-hmm. your nurse should not be doing intake paperwork. You know, that shouldn't be happening. Um, so we try to really help them once that patient hits hits the phone, hits the email, whatever it may be, to make sure everything along the continuum of that experience is exceptional for the patient, but it's also financially sound for the practice, right? Mm-hmm. Are you doing the right things and um, to make sure that this investment that, that the practice has made in a cash paying device or service is actually um, reaping them the revenue that they hoped that it would. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I think, and again, I think you and I could probably talk about this for, for hours. Um, I, absolutely. I, I, I love everything that you shared. And I think it's, it is one of those things because sometimes we'll see people that they think their marketing isn't working. Well, I'm getting bad leads. Well, but then they haven't, they haven't looked at some of those other things. Like marketing can't fix a bad staffing problem. Nope. Marketing can't fix the fact that you don't have any appointments available on calendar marketing can't fix the fact that your staff doesn't follow up with people and so then they'll cut marketing because they think that's the problem well I'm not getting a return on my investment I mean to me I think of marketing as like it's like it would should be like investing in the stock market like if I invest in the stock market and I get three dollars back for every one dollar I put in that's not an expense right but right. and, and the same thing, like with, with what you do, like, that's kind of like, you got to have both. You can't, if the phone's not ringing, the people don't have the jobs to do that they're in the right roles for. But on the flip right. side, the phone's ringing if, if, and, and the inquiries are coming in, if, if what happens after that isn't functioning correctly, you're, you're wasting money on both, both fronts. So well, A hundred percent. And I think it is, that's why that triage is so important. That's why making sure that we've really got the relay team set up properly at launch. Uh, It's why it's really important to be critically aware in the practice of who's doing what. And we secret shop clients every quarter, Um, every person, we secret shop them via their website, the, you know, leads through Google AdWords. We secret shop them on the phone at different times of the day. We ask about different services and we secret shop all their competitors. So if you offer cool sculpting, we go in and we pull up, you know, Albuquerque, New Mexico, cool sculpting, who are the first three people that come up and we secret shop them and we secret shop our client to say, okay, here's what the, here's what your competitors are doing really well. Here's what they're not doing well, because that's what a patient does. And we want to make sure that we're helping practices to convert those leads because cutting marketing, because you're not converting leads. I mean, it, it makes absolutely no sense at all. You're getting the leads. The issue tends to be once the lead hits the door, right? Once the lead hit, it's either, it's either we're not getting them converted to a consult or 
your clinical staff isn't isn't giving good outcomes, right? So where's the breakdown happening yeah. with that lead? And and then we can start, you know, we can start to dig into what kind of conversion rates do you have, retention, all those things are are really easy to look at for a practice. It's just a matter of does the practice want to invest the time, the money, and the energy into really seeing where things are. And it's hard to have conversations with practice owners and say, you've got the wrong person cast in that role. I know they've been with you for 15 years, but they're terrible at what they do. And if you want to keep them, that's fine, but you can't have them doing this job because it's costing you money. And those are tough conversations that we have with clients, but they're critically important conversations. Um, If you've got someone in charge of leads, are you reviewing how often they're touching them? What, what kind of evaluations are you doing? What's your cost per lead? Um, you know, what did you invest in getting that person in? And what is your expectation on that first appointment? And, and then the lifetime of that patient mm-hmm. to make sure that you're getting into the black very quickly with, with that patient. And what I always find interesting is that when they're so quick to say, well, they're bad leads. Well, what's the definition of that? How often are you getting, how are you assessing what that is? And um, more often than not, I think the breakdown's in-house, not from the lead. That's what we find, no matter who the marketing company is doing, Mm -hmm. the lead generation, more often than not, um, it's that the staff is overwhelmed. I don't think anyone purposely does a bad job managing the leads. I don't believe that. I just believe either we have the wrong person cast to do it, or they don't have the bandwidth to or they do don't it. The training too. They don't understand how to do it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And so, you know, it's really it. And we have to remember people, any of us, we're not quick to always self assess and say, I'm not really comfortable talking about this. Right. And, and if you've got, you know, I think the practice also has to be discerning. So if you're doing vaginal rejuvenation and you know that's predominantly postmenopausal women, then hire a postmenopausal woman or take one of your postmenopausal women on your staff to probably be the person talking to them yeah. who has empathy, who's had the treatment done, who has understanding, who can talk with people and put them at ease and make them feel comfortable. I mean, we see this um, across med spas as well. You know, if, if you've got a 21 year old size double zero doing cool sculpting consultations, while she might be really great at it, it's probably not a great conversion staffing decision. You really want to have someone who patients can relate to, that patients um, can engage with in a way that, you know, it, it's going to help drive sales. Because at the end of the day, every single bit of what we're doing in the cash pay space is 100% about converting that lead to a consult and converting every single consult to a sale. 